you want to go from the loading dock or do you just want to go around this side and get it on the pavement? Well, you could do that too. Because with that, we got to worry about it slipping and dropping. Yeah. yeah. Well, getting it down, is this the only way down to the pavement? Yeah, oh, no. otherwise we want to go off that little lip right no. there. We, we can make it work with the lip. No, that's a way, but with the rain and the mud, yeah. you know, it might be a We'll get the ramp to work with that. I have always wanted to be a race car driver. It's consuming. It's addicting. It really is. You can accidentally spend too much time in this club. Uh, you really need to be able to balance your academics and your club time. You should understand that it's a lot more time than you think it'll take. This is supposed to be for students, by students. It's, it's worth it to stick it out. It's going to be something that it's going to be stressful, and it's going to be something that you're going to give up your Friday, Saturday night, partying, whatever. I mean, you get to build a race car with your friends. What more do you want? With Formula Slug, you have a great opportunity to learn about engineering. No, just put that there. It doesn't work. JK. Change. There you go. Good. 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 Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> ah! We're a club that focuses on sustainability projects, and our flagship project is this electric vehicle that we've been building for a design competition under the Society of Automotive Engineers. So currently we have FSAE building an electric formula car. Um, the solar project, which is installing solar panels in high density areas so students can recharge their phones and other devices. And we have the Dagny. It, the idea of it originally was kind of a recreational vehicle. It wasn't intended as a performance vehicle. The three wheel design combined with kind of the tilt is kind of more of a unique thing. And the joystick control, it's, it's unique. It's supposed to be kind of a niche vehicle. With all of the solar that's coming up and, and all the different energy storage and wind energy, there's a lot changing on the grid right now. I really like the solar aspect, uh, especially because we're UC Santa Cruz, we're supposed to be sustainable. And I had been pretty disappointed uh, in there not being any hands-on engineering projects to work on here. So I thought it was really great that the team was starting up here. Welcome, new people. <laughs> so, yeah. We're building a race car. Are we? Yeah, we're trying. Someone's trying to build an electric race car over here, and they can use some help. And I was like, wow, that sounds like it's really cool. I should join in on that. Made a very ambitious choice to do a one-year design cycle. We, we set our sights at building a car, and we just went for it without really knowing what we were doing. Ah, oh, my life. You fixed this fucking... And if you counted up all the file revisions, it's probably in the hundreds of thousands or millions. I figured out there's a fucking auto router in KiCad and I've been wasting my life. There's a big time crunch, there's a gigantic, there's a gargantuan, unimaginable project that is so complex. I think people underestimate how much dedication is really required to be part of this club. What is that? Huh? This car is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Holy! Oh. You're gonna make friends. Oh, that's, that's nice. You're gonna possibly hate people at certain points. Oh, my survey. Alright, alright. Good. I'll be back. What happened to the pedal If I find any of you, fuck my ass, that was amazing. It's gonna be something that you look back on and say, wow, I built an electric race car, I, I built a solar rig. We're definitely going against the culture by doing hands-on engineering when our engineering department is very, very hands-off. UCSC is very heavy on the theory of engineering or whatever your major is. They have a lot of theory and it's good theory and they teach it well, but we don't have a lot of hands-on. You know, there's mechatronics, which is 
fabulous in its own right, but you know, we need, we need more of that in a much larger scale. It's a lot of pain, a lot of time, a lot of agreement, a lot of collaboration. It's the best and worst of the people that worked on it. And I think a lot of the professors who've seen it have thought it was really cool that we're doing this, even if it doesn't go quite with what the admin likes. I found something amazing with Formula Slug, and I just wanted to do that, and I focused all of my energy into it for the whole, my, my entire senior year, pretty much. So we had a huge amount of new people and we started the design process on the car behind me um, around the middle of October. And we went for a pretty, pretty standard FSA design um, with the exclusion of the battery being a little bit unusual. We finished design work up around uh, end of December for our first design um, and started raising money for that. Working on, we had a meeting today where we are talking about sizing and talking about approaching different solar companies to ask for sponsorship and <laughs> materials. Uh, yeah, the little free. We started out probably like negative money in the hole. Probably the first year or so of the club, it was Mostly myself, John, and Kelly paying for things out of pocket. We could take the time to start working on fundraising. We could start the time to start reaching out and doing that kind of stuff. Most teams that do this um, are getting money from their university, and they couldn't even do it without that. We're not facilitated by the school. We're not funded by the school. We're not controlled. We don't have a faculty advisor. We don't have someone holding our hand. Everything was done by students. Exactly. Slide, I have, um, why we need your help, and it's a Google map of UCSD to Lincoln, Nebraska. We are Engineers for a Sustainable World. One of our main flagship projects is called Formula Slug, and we are a competing FSAE team, which means we're doing a formula. Fundraising was one of the hardest things that we had to do, because it's that initial, that initial, give us a shot. We're not Yale, we're not Harvard, we're not Stanford, but we're going to beat them. And it, it's important to know that just because we go to UC Santa Cruz doesn't mean we're second choice. We're not any worse than any of the other guys. We're, we're working just as hard. We have a much better design, in my opinion. And I think we're going to really show them why it's important to support pretty much everyone. Hi, I'm Kelly, and this is Formula Club. I actually used to be a telemarketer for this university, so I knew Jenna Early, who was actually trying to start this whole crowdfunding thing, and I reached out to her and I was like, hey, this club is trying to make a race car, and she was like, oh, that's cool, here's an application. And I was like, I forwarded that to Kelly, and she forwarded that to Savian, and then Savian set that all together. We participated in this um, crowdfunding campaign, which is um, kind of like a GoFundMe it's the same thing as GoFundMe, except kind of UCSC based. I had a great team. A lot of people put in uh, hundreds of hours just trying to raise money that we really desperately needed. And without crowdfunding, we might not have been able to do pretty much anything else. This project provides us with really saving it. All right, look this way. Alright, ready? Ready? <laughs> and I'm Savian Raxter. And today. Oh, wow, that. It's Is that your damn line? Because it provides us with hands. Do you hear someone talking down the hallway? Uh, yeah. Hey! Shut up! <laughs> There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. What did we do today, Christian? Raised a thousand dollars. Hell 
Hell yeah, we did! We raised over $16,000, so that was great. Yeah, yeah it's shiny. Yes. Yeah. And you want about half an inch? Well, oh, that's a quarter. You're going to have three eighths of an inch down? Yeah. A lot of people feel intimidated uh, from the knowledge gap, just because there's so much to know. I also kind of felt intimidated because everyone else seemed to know what they were doing. But trust me, we don't know what we're doing half the time. I don't, especially. We're just kind of learning as we go. Even though some of our members are seniors and they've taken most of their classes, they still don't know exactly what to do and they have to pick it up as they go on. A lot of the, a lot of the great members here helped me learn how to CAD, think like an engineer. It's not bending here. I mean, it's bending here. They helped me become what I am now. We've taught many people on the team how to use SolidWorks from nothing. Just delete it and put a new one in. Yeah. Uh, is this a sketch? That line right? Like, I didn't learn how to build a wire harness in class. Or uh, design a car, for that matter. I wasn't originally supposed to be the brakes guy. There was another guy who was like, hey, I don't really know what I'm doing, so do you think you want to try it? And I was like, sure, I'll, whatever. And then all of a sudden I was spending, you know, 30 hours a week investigating why do brake systems work this way and why are the hydraulic lines going to explode if I do that. And C plus on a test, that's, I'm probably still going to pass the class. It's not, no serious negative effects, whereas this kind of thing, you know, I, I make one calculation incorrectly and my brakes don't work. A lot of our members have put in 40, 50, 60 hours a week and during the final stretch to get the comp, it exceeds even that. Um, so in a lot of ways, it's like a regular engineering job put in countless hours. There was our first design document where I believe we, um, yeah, our first, our first document that we submitted to the organization of FSAE. Um, surprisingly, we passed on the first time. I believe we all got together in a room like the day prior and all worked on it and that's how it got through. I don't know how, but it somehow did. You know, we've made plenty of mistakes and we've had to do strange fixes to make them work. My main goal with the car is definitely to pass tech. That's definitely the biggest barrier to entry. Just to be able to run at the competition would put us almost on the podium some years. And now we can finally go and compete. This is what we've been trying to do. This, finally someone up there likes it. Infinite power. Solar is one of the big things, especially in the Santa Cruz area. And so we saw it as the perfect project to get our hands dirty. I think it would be great to go forward and uh, start improving our campus as best as we can. I don't see how we can do that unless we actually start. We're UCSC. We're going to do it our way. So UCSC, sustainable, everything like that, and let's do solar. Let's go out there and let's make a difference. We're not only gonna go out there with a car that was all student funded and made, but we're gonna go out there and try to change the event in some way and set a standard. And maybe little by little, maybe the year after that, there'll be another team with it. And then maybe a few years down the line, the entire competition is solar powered because it can be done. You just need someone to do it. You need someone to take that first step. I believe the solar station project is something that anyone can work on. It's not gonna be difficult. It's just gonna be time consuming. We're all planned for the solar recharging project. Is that we're gonna build a smaller portable station that we're gonna take out there when we go, whether it's this year or next year, whenever we decide to go, and we're gonna charge our stuff. All of our laptops, our battery operated stuff. It's like a really loud Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. In fact, uh, one of the supporters for us, Sue Carter, she owns her own solar company. Manufacturing company. And she Sue Carter has been one of the biggest supports of this club without 
really being in the spotlight. She's a hard working woman. She's all about hands on learning. And so when we approached her about this club, she was more than happy to support us. The fact that she is the main, our main contact in the university, and she's not really in engineering. She's just dedicated to hands on projects. And it's really nice to see someone at the university dedicated to that. Thank you for everything that you've done for us so far and for being supportive of, of our projects and for helping us get space and for helping us meet people that we need to meet. She helps out at the New Tech Meetup. She's prevalent in the Santa Cruz community. She's a great person. I've, I met Sue Carter personally and it's emotional, honestly. You're one of the very first people who believed in us. Thank you. We would not be here without you, and I, I really mean that. I really do. And I hope we can make you proud. Thank you for everything you've given us. I'm doing a better job. Well, you had a lot of easier environment. Yeah, that's true. But you know, it's... I'm so It's in there. The commitment, it's, it's what you make of it. Um, I wouldn't lie and say that if you're not putting in the hours, you're going to get something out of it. This is a very demanding activity. You will hit multiple roadblocks and that four hour project will suddenly become a week project. We often had parts that were being changed in the morning and water jet cut that same night. Fabricating parts at the San Jose Tech Shop where we go out from Santa Cruz to San Jose, we go and we have access to industrial sized machines to produce various parts. Spent hundreds of hours at various shops uh, driving around. It's very easy um, to build up this mountain of tiny things. Oh, we'll just, we'll make our own seat. We'll make a really cool battery. We'll custom do our shocks, etc. You can have the exact design in CAD, but it will just not work. We just, we got super stressed out by it and that caused personal conflicts and where we were having trouble, we had to have lots of meetings about the conflicts themselves and not what we were doing on the team. Build a C car at an A team. I understand you want to build the best race car you can and I think it got a little muddied in the water on this one. We're not saying you're wasting your time. You've done a lot. You've done, I don't even know how many thousands of hours. Fighting with mechanical or conflict, constructive criticism, arguing, whatever you'd like to call it, but it was just butting heads, a lot of butting heads. No, FSAE isn't relevant. I mean, they, they uh, are. No, it is. That's why we're going to get there. there. I know we're not going to talk to you, but that's not the point. We had a connection with um, Russie's shop, which is a shop that's off campus, and it was being, we used it as a workspace and allowed us to get a lot of things done. And so things transpired this year that didn't allow that to happen and that relationship was broken. As a team, at least specifically our team, we had the drive to, okay, well, we don't have this shop now, so we're gonna have to go to another one. Oh, we don't have that shop. Oh, I guess we're gonna have to go over the hill to San Jose and build stuff anyways. Or, hey guys, we gotta do something till 6 a.m. Oh, Sam, you haven't slept in three days. Everyone being involved in a passionate project, everyone really wants to put their best foot forward, make sure the project succeeds. And even though sometimes it feels like there's a lot of pressure on one particular person, everyone knows that they're trying their best and will do their best to support, even though it doesn't immediately seem like it. Most importantly, if they love doing it, they're going to be here, you know? And I think that's why everyone who is here is here, because they just love doing it. Damn, Mike, I like, I like you, I like you. You're really, he's really expressive with his uh, I'm anger. not going to lie to anyone. <laughs> that's true. Tell him the truth. That's why I like that guy. <laughs> At least you're honest. No nonsense. You don't give a fuck about what people think. As long as we build a car. I do, I do kind of, at this point, I do consider us kind of a, kind of a family. Oh God! Oh God! There goes our car! It's kind of hard to say, yeah, I don't know who this guy is, even though I spent maybe a hundred plus hours with him, I have no idea what he does. Basically all of my friends are on the team. It's been really good for me socially, because I definitely struggle with uh, making friends and connections with people. I, I didn't know a single person when I walked into the room in the first meeting. I was like, I, I remember John asked me, he's like, hey, who are you? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm Travis. Hi. Yeah, I, I wanted to join your club. I've made some really good friends on the team. I've also had some very concerning relationships with people on the team. I can make this go faster than you. Very good job.
job before. Not doing a very good job. Come on. Daddy's coming home. <laughs> it's not like we have a lot of people to try and convince to join our club. There just aren't a lot of girls in engineering. The fact that there are so many men does still make it difficult. Like, there have been times where I can't get someone to be my lab partner, or when uh, I'm in a study group and I say the answer, people don't believe me and they don't believe my expectation or don't believe my explanations. There's the shiny side of the club, which is the car, the cool hip side, of course. Like, you want to build a car, you want to go fast. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what you want to do. That's what everyone wants to do. But there's the other people, like Dina who came into this club because of solar recharging and she wanted to be a part of that. And that's why I really pushed her to be in charge of solar this past year because she was passionate about it and she wanted to make a difference. It'll be hard and you'll have to work a little harder than your peers to prove that you're capable and that you're smart enough. But once you do, it's really rewarding. In my classes now, before people wouldn't really listen to me or or take what I was saying is true when I knew that I had the right answer and they just wouldn't accept it but now everyone sees me as an equal and you know guys are willing to work with me and work together with me and not just tell me what to do I've had to put myself out there and work really hard to prove that I'm capable and now people are acknowledging that I got an email from the Dean of Engineering who was trying to promote Girls for Engineering on Giving Day. And you know how the engineering department doesn't really help us. When I was looking through the website, I realized that the same platform that it was being promoted was the same for crowdfunding. So I reached out to Jenna again and I asked her to be a part of this because crowdfunding was pretty successful and she was really, she really wanted us to be in it. So she signed us up and then I realized that when I did more research I realized that the application deadline was two months ago and that we actually signed in two days before giving day. God damn it, my hands are shaking. I know, me too dude. The emotional roller coaster that was giving day. 24 hours of just non-stop cold calling and pushing and blasting out on every single channel, people making Twitters and Instagrams, doing everything we could to get noticed. Surprisingly, we got a lot of donors from it, which was really great because like during the time before, the club was having a lot of fighting. Giving Day really brought us all together. $12,000, wow. Oh, no, they're sharing it in the morning. Really? Oh. Everyone participated, even people from the club that went to just one meeting and left. Like, I saw the donor list and I was really surprised to see names that I just heard one-offs that they actually came and helped us, so that was great. It raised almost as much money as crowdfunding, but it was needed and it was just wonderful. It was great. So I found out that uh, John does like homebrewing. Wow. Would people be interested in like a uh, special in one? In our seasonal tea? Yeah. Like one, you know, unique ball for the year, you get to keep it. Wow. A little yeah. mini trophy for the year, right? Have the car, like a cat on it. Or Are you going to Lincoln? I might go to Lincoln. I'll fly there, though. Oh, Is that man. I wish I could afford that. Round trip is like 600. Really? Yeah. But that's only for like three days. Well, if you can afford that, I mean, it's kind of worth it. Yeah. Are you going? Yeah, dude. If we get the car fucking done, I have a good chance of actually driving. <laughs> well, that's the only reason you want to come. I would fucking love that. What, you think it'll roll earlier or later? That we can roll earlier. Race? Not, no, 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 we can, no, we can drive. Drive earlier. That we can drive earlier. 
Move All right. Under, move under oh, its own power. Yeah. yeah. I will bet you a beer. Yeah, so like, All right. Like, like, I'm gonna get a beer. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. But what kind of beer? But to, but no, the car but, like, will drive. A, no, this is a great bet because the, if the car drives earlier, that's fantastic. Yeah. And if I and if the car drives later, well, at least I get a beer. Yeah. So at least I make him happier. <laughs> So, ESF, they don't like our battery stuff design at all. It, will have, it has zero chance of passing tech the way it sits. We submitted it, we looked last night, we submitted it back in February for, for design review. They said nothing. We sent a, a very, very detailed schematic on April 5th that had all of the wording, how we were doing the batteries, pictures, diagrams, fucking smoke signals, everything, they said nothing. They said stuff about other things, not that. So last night they sent a message off to you, or to you and Steve and posted on Slack, stating that the batteries have to be fused, anything in parallel. Which means that the entire battery pack doesn't work. It won't be, it won't be legal for their regulations, which means a redesign. two weeks. We had the meeting when we finally decided that we wouldn't be able to make competition and I believe plenty of people, including myself, teared up. That was a rough day. And there were a lot of solutions that were proposed, some, some pretty out there, but we couldn't see any realistic way to do it without failing everyone out of their classes from the additional workload. For all the challenges we overcame and we faced, there was only maybe one more hurdle. Sometimes it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. You're running for a really long time, like you're, you just run, and then you stop running. And while you were running, you, you felt like you could keep going. But then when you stopped, you didn't want to start up again. As a first year team, we don't really know what we're doing wrong, you know, and they were just saying like, oh, this doesn't comply with the rules and we really didn't know how or how to fix it you know in the very short amount of time we had left i wish we had known that our battery box was not compliant earlier um i really can't blame the judge it wasn't his fault i just felt like finally with formula slug i had worked so hard and i felt like because i was in contention to actually be the driver like I had made one of my, I felt like I was gonna make one of my lifelong childhood dreams come true. And I had done that. Like no one had helped me. My, my parents couldn't, even though they would have loved to. No one else did, and I felt like I had earned that. And finding out that we weren't gonna be able to go to that competition, it destroyed me. I was completely in disarray. I just, and, it was really crappy, especially me being a, a senior. And I put so much of myself into this project and I really wanted to go to Nebraska. Last year was such a small part of our club. We were very focused on the car and our, our solar station was supposed to be to help Lincoln, Nebraska, kind of, it was supposed to be for Lincoln, Nebraska. And as soon as we realized we couldn't go, everything just kind of fell apart and we just kind of stopped working on the solar station. It was heartbreaking. It was devastating. I don't know what was, to me, what hit me more. Feeling sad that, this, that the project I was working on for so long fell away like that or having to explain to your team, the people that looked up to you, that relied on you, that because of an oversight, they weren't going and you 
you, you, you internalize it and you feel like you let down all those people. As sad as I was, I was never as prouder of everyone in the club than that moment. We came so far, so far, and that's amazing. That's really great. We're a first year team turning into a two year team and it's amazing how far we really, really came. And as sad as it is, and I'm extremely sad about this and I'm sorry we couldn't do better, but honestly, I'm proud. I'm really proud of us and I'm really proud for the fact that if we failed, it's because of something out of our control. I feel like Everyone who's here has been through a lot together, and we've definitely emerged stronger from that. And we don't want to bring a product that's not finished. We don't want to say, oh, we tried our hardest, and this is kind of all that we got out of it. I think it's for the best. We've learned from last year, and I think off of that, we can be much more successful this year. Sure, we didn't achieve our primary goal, but you can say that we created a team literally out of thin air. We created so many different things just out of midair. We pulled people together in ways no one could have ever seen. If we can take another year and really perfect what we have and show that we're a good engineering team and we're a good set of people and we're smart and we can make a good product, let's take the extra year and let's show everyone what we're really made of. Oh well, I still have an awesome job now because of Formula Slug. I like my job. I like what I do. I'm still here today working on the race car and soon it'll be done and we'll all drive it. My new project, which is going to be implementing solar charging stations around campus, which I feel is going to be good for the campus and good for to get our, our name out for the club. By the end of this year, have a couple of our solar stations up, especially getting through the testing phase is going to be probably the, the toughest obstacle going through all the politics of the school. I want our first priority to be to finish that solar station. Since I have taken on the responsibility of Dagny Lead, and what I want to do with the project is I want to kind of have it I want, to, I want to have it as like a secondary project, maybe for people who don't, maybe they don't like race cars, but they still want to have that sort of, that, that hands-on engineering experience or something that moves. The fact that we don't have FSA rules to deal with means we have more creativity with it. I really wanted to become a leader in the club. Between engineering and management, it's usually kind of, you know, easy to go between the two. A lot of engineers end up as engineering managers. And I wanted to see, you know, what is it like to be on the engineering side and what is it like to be on the energy, engineering management side. I like talking with, with people, I like catting, I like designing parts, thinking about stuff, and I like teaching people too. That was cool. That was one of the that was one of the warmest memories I have is when I when I did body work and I taught people how to cat. That was great. I would love to keep doing that. That was cool. I like teaching people. What we've done so far on this car has been really impressive. The fact that students have designed most everything on it is really incredible. FS1 is uh, next year's car to compete at Lincoln 2017. What we're doing different on this car is on FS0 we ran into a lot of issues of just having so many parts and so much to get done. So we're really going as simple as possible. I want to keep an eye on people and make sure they're not trying to do too much because that was a thing that happened. Okay, we know how the car drives, we know how it handles, we know where the spots went wrong, we know how to build the battery pack now. You're not going to care whether, you know, the car's done this year, you're going to jump in, you're going to, you know, learn everything that's happened so far and, you know, probably have a million and a half ideas of your own for next year. If nothing else, not going to Lincoln is a bigger motivator to go this year. And we can say, like, yeah, I, we did it. We're, we're the underdogs still and we're, we still haven't competed, but I, I think we're going to make a big mark on the tournament. So hopefully, we will be in Lincoln this year. That's the plan.
Thank you for having faith in us. I mean, we haven't, we're still not done, but we are going to have this car done. Thanks to San Jose Tech Shop for being so awesome with us, for staying till 2 a.m. I'd like to thank Jenna for basically giving us those the platforms to even allow us to do that, because if it wasn't for her, this wouldn't be possible. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Honestly, um, you guys do a lot more for me than you probably understand. I'd like to say I'd like to thank Lucas, because without him I wouldn't have joined this group, probably wouldn't have my current job, I'd probably be back living in Sacramento with my dad and my mom. And uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I'd like to thank John, uh, Kelly, and Peter, and all the other founding members. Really just couldn't have done it without you. I'd like to thank Kenneth and Sam. I think they were phenomenal in how they handled people, in both with technical stuff as well as just from the social aspect and keeping everyone together and level-headed. Thanks, John. John did everything for this club. Thank we're him. Not, we're not playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank every single person that showed up over the past two years, everyone that came to every meeting, that showed up to the meetings that they could, that put in their time, that would come here and work for hours. You guys are the reason we're so successful. You guys are the reason we have everything. And I, want, I sincerely thank you for giving me probably the best years I've ever had in college. Thank you, Kelly, for helping me get into this, for showing me that, believing in me, to push, always push me to do better and do more and keep at it. Thank you, John, for putting up with all the shit. All, all of our late nights bickering back and forth, all of our dinners trying to figure out what we're gonna do and run the things. Between Kelly and John, I don't think we would have have been successful as we would have. It was definitely, we needed great leadership and I was just following in tow behind them. Thank you, Sam and Nikki, Milo, so many other, I can't think of the different names, Electrical, Kenneth, Kevin, just so many people on Electrical that definitely kept at it and did would sit there and go through rules and rules of the thick rule book going over it to make sure we did it. Thank you, Christian and Kurt and Michael, Travis and Savian and all of you guys on Mechanical. You guys were definitely probably not only one of the most difficult parts of the, parts of the team, but definitely some of the most dedicated. Thank you, Handy and Emily Dinnerman and Emily Svensson and so many other people that were on the operation side that made it all together. And thank you, Zero Motorcycles. All of you guys out at Zero Motorcycles, we would not, we, we would not have a working car if it wasn't for you guys. Thank you for giving us, us a chance. That is an enormous thing and that means so much to us to where we, are, we were UCSC's first ever FSAE team and we built this and we were student run, student found, student made. Everything was done by students. And the incredible, I think there's people out there that understand the incredible difficult task that is. And you guys believed in us and I thank you from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for believing in us and giving us a chance. And when you get a group of individuals like this together, we are capable of great things. And we will do our best not to let you down.